The Lord be with you. The Lord be with you. Greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are grateful that you are present this morning uh, if you're in the sanctuary. We're grateful for those who are worshiping with us via the live stream, and we are grateful for all who go to the service online and watch the YouTube posting and worship that way at any hour, uh, any day of the week. Uh, together, uh, on site or off site, in this hour or in another hour, we are worshiping God. And what an honor, privilege, and calling it is to do so together. There are a few announcements. Um, I'll start inside the bulletin on page three. Uh, there's the QR code for online giving, and it talks about assisted living. Uh, assisted hearing devices or listening devices, excuse me. And uh, so note that there's also a calendar uh, on the back page that uh, lists both worship notes and events coming up this week. On the insert with um, the pictures on it, you can follow those announcements down the page, but I would particularly call your attention to the box uh, with uh, Maureen Popovich's picture in the upper right. The last in the season of concerts on Carter Creek uh, is, uh, in this season, is this afternoon at five here in the sanctuary. And uh, Ms. Popovich will be presenting a program that is a uh, Mother's Day theme. So she's been here before. Uh, uh, and has been uh, incredibly well received. So uh, if you have the five o'clock hour open, uh, take note of that. Next Sunday, where the little word congratulations is, there is uh, what we're calling a life passages reception for those in the congregation who have just turned 18 or for those who are making a, a school transition um, those uh, that that three line paragraph is there and that reception will be on the patio following worship next sunday so uh, as well on the 21st if you have uh, thoughts or considerations about becoming a formal member of this church or maybe it should be in the adverb form a member of this church formally um, Visit with me or speak with me, please, this week because we have several people who are interested in being received by the session next Sunday morning uh, prior to worship at 1020. And if you would like to be among them, uh, we would be honored and privileged and, and delighted for you to be a part of that group. Also, on Mother's Day, on the back of the insert is a, a litany that will comprise our prayers this morning before the offering and after the uh, sharing of the peace. So, uh, sort of know that that's, that that's there. One other announcement. Um, we have um, Uh, Tony Geishauser continues to be, in terms of announcements of those who are ill, Tony continues to be a patient in the intensive care unit at St. Joseph. Um, he's, he's held his own this week and had some improvement. Uh, last evening, a uh, longtime member here, Bookman Peters, asked me to uh, ask you for your prayers uh, this week. Bookman has... Uh, received a, uh, a, a diagnosis of a malignancy that he is going to be having further conversations about in terms of uh, doctors and treatment and follow-up to the diagnosis. So he asks simply that you all remember him and uh, Florence and their family and the medical team uh, that is a part of his life right now. What I didn't tell you is to sign in on the friendship pads if you have 
an ability to reach over to the center aisle portion or locate your uh, friendship pad wherever it might be in the general neighborhood. Uh, if you would pass that to your neighbors, leave us any note that you would like the church office to have. Uh, friends, uh, we're, Lisa will play the offertory this morning. Oh, that's the other thing. Handbells we're going to play this morning. We still have a handbell group. Uh, they're still going to play again. But today they needed to um, they needed to cancel their very difficult arrangement because they were short a couple of people. And so um, Lisa's going to pick up the slack. But I would invite the young disciples to meet me uh, on the chancel steps. have a seat. So on the insert today in the bulletin, what, what's above the prayers here? There's a bunch of flowers, isn't there? That's right. And oh, I noticed that last week, although I thought y'all were going to wear your superheroes outfit, have a seat, Zachary. Y'all did wear your superheroes outfits this week, didn't you? And because you're studying in Sunday school, what? Superheroes in the comic books? Hmm, partly, but superheroes where? In the Bible? Superheroes, that's right. And at church, we study the Bible. Zachary, come on over here just a little bit. Zachary, would you hold my paper here for my prayers? Okay, well, y'all can share that. So, so today is what special day? Hello, Jesse. It's what? It's Mother's Day. That's right. So in addition to the pink flowers on the top of the prayer page, we have what? Pink flowers here where the congregation is saying, we give thanks for everybody all the time. And we give thanks for men, and we give thanks for women. And today, there's a special theme where we're thinking some about mothers. And so, uh, every time the church gathers, we're worshiping God, and we are thinking about how God wants us to be with each other. And today, we, speci we especially think about mothers and, and others who care for each other. Okay? All right. Well, y'all want to hold hands? Just come over here. Grab my hand. All right. Zach, can you grab this hand? We'll just pretend like. Okay. Y'all help me pray. Thank you, God, for all your people and for all of your love. Thank you for the rain and the flowers and for mothers and dads and all your people. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you, sir.
Welcome to worship this morning. Let us remember the words from Psalm 100 and the prophet Habakkuk, referring to worship as a both and make a joyful noise to the Lord of the earth, come into the Lord's presence with singing. Plus, as the Lord is present in the holy temple, let all the earth be hushed into silence. With gladness and reverence, let us stand and sing together hymn number 14, For the Beauty of the Earth, singing stanzas one, four, and five together. Would you stand? both our praise and confession, let us pray together. We praise you, O Holy One, for your expansive imagination and stunning capability, and for your engagement and human vulnerability for the sake of both your people and creation. Forgive us all sin, waywardness, and failings. Repair all brokenness. Heal our fractured and bruised relationships personally and across communities. Make us new altogether for serving you and your people near and far in the way and spirit of Jesus Christ.
Let us hear and share with gladness the unearnable and supreme news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. gospel in our lives and God's grace to make us new. Let us greet one another in the peace of Christ which gathers us together. stand and sing our doxology together. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy
You may be seated. As we prepare for the offering, uh, today we're going to switch the order of the service up just slightly, and we will have our prayers of thanksgiving, intercession, and the Lord's Prayer uh, at this point before the offering is taken. But let us remember as we prepare for the offering and, and continue to sense how our lives are before God in this worship service, sensing God's call for a significant relationship in every part of life, that when those offering plates are passed or whether you use your cell phone to work that QR code, whether you have money to share through the church or not, God is calling us in every part of our lives to share the gifts that God has given. So again this morning, together, aware that we are God's servants and people in community, uh, let us take the page with the prayer litany on it, and, um, and we will be led through this. Your, your readings are in the bold at the end of each uh, sentence. Let us pray. Wondrous God, as you have called your people to recognize, support, and pray for one another, receive our prayers this calendar day, designated with a focus on motherhood. To those who have experienced fulfillment in giving birth, we, we celebrate, celebrate with, with you. you. To those who have experienced the loss of a child, we grieve with you. To those who are in the trenches with little ones every day and wear the badges of food stains and all day exhaustion, we appreciate you. To those who experienced loss through miscarriage, failed adoptions, or running away, we mourn with you. To those who desire motherhood and find that goal evasive, know no, of our, our support and prayers. prayers. To those who are foster moms, mentor moms, and spiritual moms, may your needed numbers increase. To those who have warm and close relationships with your children, we rejoice yes. with you. To those who have disappointment, heartache, and distance with your children, we persist with you. To those who have experienced a mother's death, we hold you in prayer given the loss you feel. To those who experienced abuse at the hands of your own mother, we sympathize with your sadness and mixed feelings. To those who lived through all the tests of your children, including the testing you endured by virtue of being a mother, we are better for having you in our midst. To those who will have emptier nests in the upcoming year, we are both sad with you and hopeful with you. And to those who are pregnant with new life, both expected and surprising, we anticipate with you. This Mother's Day, we come alongside all of God's people. Mothering and life are not for the faint of heart. We have real warriors in our midst. Thanks be to God. Now as Jesus long ago taught disciples to pray, we pray together again. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Ted's sermon and the Word of God recorded in the 17th chapter of Acts, verses 22 through 34, as printed in your bulletin. <clears throat> Hear now the Word of God. Now Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription to an unknown God. What therefore you worship is unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, he is the Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor, he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live, so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live, in him we move, in him we have our being. As even some of your own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Now since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. Now when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some scoffed, but others said, we will hear you again about this. At that, Paul, at that time, Paul left them. But some of them joined him and became believers, including Dionysius, the Arapagite, and a woman named Damaris, and others with them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It has been said before that from its Greek roots, the word liturgy means the work of the people. So this morning, we're going to carry that forward a little bit. Uh, you are part of the proclamation of the gospel, so keep the inside of your bulletin um, within arm's reach because these three verses uh, David and Lisa will lead us in singing to familiar tunes. Um, I, I discovered this poem um, a week or so ago, and it's actually in the hymn book set to a tune that is not all that familiar to me and maybe not to this congregation. So we decided we would use it, but we would use it to music familiar to us. So. Uh, David and Lisa will help you more than I can at that point, but just keep this handy. Let us pray. Oh God, we are before you as individuals and we are before you together as a worshiping community uh, in this room and beyond. As we are before you, Speak to each one of us through the power of your gospel in the spirit of Jesus Christ. 
Grant that grace would be alive in us in ways we recognize from the past and even in ways that are new to us this day. Uphold us and change us as you have need. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, and we say together, amen. Carl P. Dahl Jr. is his name. He is an Episcopal priest born in 1944. And next year, if you do the math, he will turn 80. But when Mr. Dahl was 46, he composed the poem lyrics that we will sing this morning uh, during the proclamation of the gospel, as I have indicated, keep the bulletin close. He did not write those lyrics specifically in relation to Acts 17, 22 to 34, as George helped us to read and hear. But that is one of the uh, appointed readings for many churches for this day. And so uh, I think it, it is a great passage for this time of year, and at least for me to hear, maybe for you. So let's see if there might be a helpful and a corresponding intersection of that passage of Scripture and of Mr. Dawes' lyrics. First of all, um, we learn through life just who you are, who I am, who we are with other people. We learn through life that everyone is entitled to his or her opinions. And some people in certain moments, even in many moments, are free to express their opinions. And you've heard that saying, well, he or she hasn't ever had an unspoken opinion. Well, through the years, speaking of preachers, I've heard a few preachers in sermons on this set of verses say that Paul made a tactical mistake in not preaching more specifically about Jesus to the crowd there in Athens, Greece that day. Um, there in Athens, the capital of philosophical debate and the pursuit of wisdom, according to these preachers, Paul made a mistake um, in not speaking specifically about Jesus with Jesus' name and talking about Jesus' uh, ministry and his death on the cross and then his resurrection. That would be that God in Jesus, according to Paul's general sense of the power of the gospel, that God in Jesus um, represents God as creator and redeemer still at work and in vulnerability in work in the fullest sense with human beings in the world as we know it. What Paul did do is uh, subtly and rather indirectly he sees a statue and he makes reference to it. He says, oh, look, you have a statue here dedicated to an unknown God. I think that's maybe not all that different from what we are accustomed to, uh, the tomb of the unknown soldier. And, and those uh, memorials exist in more nations than just ours, but in a tomb to an unknown soldier, someone or someones who have died and whose identity could not be discovered is buried there as a representative of all who have given their lives. And, and the nation or the culture honors that person. Well, Paul says, in a way somewhat related, you Greeks celebrate many gods in the religion of your city-states and your culture, but let me tell you about one you do not identify or seem to know 
in a deep and important way, but one who is yet here around and who is even claiming your life along with the lives of other people. Uh, you might say this is an unnamed God, uh, at least that's what y'all say in these parts, but let me tell you more. So it's true, Paul did not preach in the, in the verses that we read as George led us. Here's Jesus, recognize Jesus, follow Jesus. He didn't preach that in the face of those in Athens, Greece, who did not grow up in Judea of Palestine as Jesus did and as Jesus' faithful initial disciples did. Paul implies um, that people sort of have to go from where they are. And that's what he recognizes in this practice. So he's going to take the life experience of the Greeks related to their brand of religion, and he's going to try to bring them around to understand something of the God in Jesus Christ who has changed his own life. He didn't know Jesus personally like those first disciples, but he had a vision that shook him to the very foundations of who he was, his identity. So what he essentially is implying is that God seeks every life in Palestine, in Judea, in Athens, Greece, in Athens, Texas, in Brazos County, Texas. God seeks every life with love. And this becomes known by way of a person who goes by the name of Jesus, but whose name I have not specifically spoken with you, Greeks in Athens. So now it's your turn. David and Lisa will lead us in singing stanza one of Carl P. Dawes Jr.'s poem. This morning, the first stanza we'll sing is to St. Anne, which is often associated with the hymn, Our God, Our Help in Ages Past. God in whom all life begins, who births the seed to fruit, bestow your blessing on our lives, here let your love find root, bring forth in us the Spirit's gifts of patience, joy, and peace. Deliver us from numbing fear and grant our faith increase. So then Paul's preaching concludes. And that preaching, at least in my estimation, is not a failure, as you might think, if you only listened to the biblical interpreters and preachers who disagree with Paul's indirect approach. So let's see what happens here. The Scripture tells us uh, in those verses toward the end of the passage when Paul has finished preaching and sort of left the scene. Uh, some in Athens said, Mr. Paul, your religion has no meaning for me. And others said, hmm, I'd like to hear more sometime. And a few others say, I am convinced. Yes, this message for life, which comes from God with love that death-dealing powers cannot hold or overcome? That's what I sense claims my life. So sign me up. 
Now, verse 32 goes on to mention two people by name, Dionysius and Damaris. They are two of the ones that said, sign me up. And there are church tradition stories, whether accurate or not, that tell us that Dionysius, over time, became uh, one of the early bishops in the early church in Greece. Maybe, maybe not, but that's what tradition says. Paul's preaching that day when he came for a debate about philosophy changed his life permanently. And Damaris, the church tradition on her is much more uncertain, uh, or it purports to not be as certain, maybe. She is interpreted in one of three ways. Number one, maybe she was a lady friend of one or more of the men who gathered as the male philosophers. Two, possibly she was the spouse of one of the gathered male philosophers. And three, some think she was actually the only one or one of the few female members of the Athenian Philosophical Debate Society. We don't know. It's Mother's Day. And um, related to Dionysius and particularly Damaris and, and those few others who the Scripture says were interested in what Paul presented of the gospel of God's love, uh, seeing the gospel as changing their lives. Uh, let's focus for just a few moments if we can bring the dial on the chronological scale way forward, let's focus for a few moments on ourselves and the gospel of God in Jesus, which Paul preached. When I was six or seven years old, on a Saturday morning about this time of year, in 1960 or 61, my father gathered up uh, my sister and me to walk. Uh, she was uh, a year young. She is a year younger than I am. And he put uh, our younger brother in his arms. He was about two or three. And we headed out on a trek to the local hospital uh, from our house. Now, there was no emergency. The only emergency might have been that his car was in the shop. And my mother had taken her car to work about 6.20, she usually left the house so she could be at the hospital for the shift change conference shortly after 6.30. So the car was at the hospital and we were at the house and the hospital was about uh, maybe a mile and a half from the house. So for six and seven year olds, for my sister and me, it was gonna be a a stretch of a walk, but we could do it. And, and my brother wanted to be carried a good bit of that way because he was only two or three. But when we got to the hospital, the, the side door, uh, which we normally entered, the main door was, oh, about as far from here to the children's center down the building. But we usually walked in at the side door and it was a fairly narrow door and a narrow hallway. And then the, uh, infant nursery was just across the hall and, and in a little area, sitting area for people not in the nursery. But when you walked in, the first thing that you saw on the, on the facing wall of the opposite, uh, opposite hallway was a nurse with her cap on and her white uniform and uh, her shoulders were erect and she had her finger right here and it said one word please. Well, I knew what that meant. I mean, at six or seven, I, I knew that noise was more fun than silence most of the time, that, that we make noise when we play, we make noise when we cry, we make noise um, 
whenever we want to, uh, just because we're six or seven years old. But I knew what this meant. And I think even though I'd seen that sign, that poster with that nurse before, it suddenly dawned on me that in this place, serious work was being done. Life against death type work. And that while making noise is a, is a great part of life, an important part of life, even when we're in agony, it's an important point of life. I sensed that right then, there are times and places when life against death calls us to let that kind of work happen around us without us making noise. So I've sort of carried that forward with me that uh, no matter how much I want to play or argue or laugh or cry, even in church where all of that is okay, we want people to have a good time in church. Paul's preaching here in Athens, as the story is told, reminds one of the hospital poster. Quiet, please. Whether your name is Dionysius or Damaris or Ted, which was my dad's name, or Cherry, which was my mother's name, or Marcia, my sister's name, or Brian, my brother's name, or my name, wherever you are, whatever the name you go by, there are times when we hush the noise in order to listen. God's love is at work in each one. And the life-changing influence of God's love in Jesus is what will always, thankfully, undermine every death-dealing power which holds us back. Surely we can say with the, um, the, the, the modern day picture of the elementary age girl on the bulletin cover, Shh, healing in progress. Now when I think about healing in progress, I think of those letters H-I-P, healing in progress. And I also think about the letters R-I-P, which we usually associate with um, a, a farewell to those who have died. Rest in peace. But if R-I-P is more than rest in peace, while we yet are vertical and breathing, what if it stands for reconstruction in progress, Help, healing in progress, healing in progress, HIP, and reconstruction in progress, RIP. That's what it's like, isn't it, when God's love is at work in us continually. So she's important to give a message to us that that healing and then that reconstruction is part of who we are today and who God is in our very midst. A few days ago, I read Mr. Dahl's poem, as I said, and I realized particularly there's a, there's a line in that second stanza which characterized the faith and the life witness of my mother for Mother's Day and my dad and of many others, you among them. It's what Mr. Dahl wrote in that second stanza as, as a prayer for ourselves. 
May we have the grace to seek the power your peace imparts. So David and Lisa are going to help us uh, this time singing stanza two to the familiar tune of Amazing Grace. Unite in mutual ministry our minds and hands and hearts that we may have the grace to seek the So to conclude, aren't we mindful of Paul preaching with subtlety to people that he had never met before? Aren't we mindful of how he was respectful of differences, seeking the conviction from them that there was common ground among them? And that common ground among all of us is the playing field, it is the garden, it is the hospital of God's love known especially in Jesus. But everywhere we come and go to serve. Don't we know how in silence Deep within each one of us, God's healing is in process and in progress. And that the reconstruction of our lives and the whole world is underway. Healing in progress, construction, reconstruction in progress. And that's going on locally, but regionally, and also globally. In so many ways, in so many ways, that we may have the grace to seek the power God's peace imparts. So we conclude by singing Mr. Dahl's stanza number three. And this time to the tune Asmon, which we usually sing to oh four thousand tongues to sing. Through tears and laughter, grief and joy, enlarge our trust and care. So bind us in community that we may risk and dare. Be with us when we gather here to worship, sing, and pray. Then send us forth in power and faith to live the words we All honor and praise be to God. I invite you to stand in spirit and if possible to stand physically and give a statement of our faith together from the confession of 1967, the words printed in the bulletin. 
The reconciling work of Jesus was the supreme crisis in the life of humankind. Jesus' cross and resurrection become personal crisis and present hope for people when the gospel is proclaimed and believed. In this, the Spirit brings God's forgiveness to people, moves them to respond in faith, repentance, and obedience, and initiates the new life in Christ. This new life takes place in community in which persons know that God loves and accepts them in spite of who and what they are. They therefore accept themselves and love others, knowing that no person has any ground on which to stand except God's grace. Would you join us in singing together our closing hymn, hymn number 749, Come, Live in the Light. Come, live in the light. Shine with the joy and the love of the Lord we are called. To be light for the kingdom, to live in the freedom of the city of God. We are called to act with justice. We are called to love tenderly. We are called to run another, to walk humbly with God. So come, open your heart. Show your mercy to all who in fear we are called. To be hope for the hopeless, so hatred and violence will be no more. We are called to act with justice. We are called to love tenderly. We are called to serve one another, to walk humbly with God. Sing, sing. Song. Sing of that great day when all will be one, God will claim, and we'll walk with each other as sisters and brothers united in love. We are called to act with justice, we are called to love tenderly, we are called to serve one another. To walk humbly with God. Listening in quietness. The late Carlisle Marney, a philosopher, preacher, teacher, evangelist, made this pronouncement. When we take time to listen, when we take time to listen, then we shall discover, we shall discover that we have always been heard. When we take time to listen, we shall discover that we have always been heard. And in our listening, we will discover, as Ted has pointed out, healing in process or progress and reconstruction in progress. Go in peace, go in joy, go in gratitude and discover and listen to the work of the Lord God active in your presence. In Christ, amen.